Uh, hi, in my talk today, I will show you a different approach to achieve runtime programmability. This is a uh, whole stack design. Um, P4 has enabled uh, rapid and easy development of uh, new network functions. But how fast we can deploy this function into the network is a very different thing. Today's programmable switches are only programmable at a compile time, which means once the P4 program is compiled and loaded to the switch hardware, the switch will become fixed. To change the switch function, operators must recompile and reflash the pipeline with the new P4 program, and this will cause downtime and pack the loss. To avoid that, we need to do traffic join and unjoin, uh, which requires careful traffic scheduling and network management. So on today's programmable switches, the changes must be infrequent and operator-driven. To quickly deploy new network functions into the network, we need runtime programmability. Runtime programmability can live upgrade the switch function at runtime with zero downtime and no packed loss. And it can reuse the current pipeline as much as possible and only upgrade the program partially to minimize the changes. And also, all the changes at runtime are guaranteed with strong consistency. So runtime programmability has a lot of benefits. Let me give you a few examples. First, using runtime programmability, we can insert the needed security function at runtime to mitigate the attacks in real time. If the attack changes, we can also change the defense accordingly. And we can also do just-in-time network optimization to improve the network performance. For instance, by monitoring the traffic characteristics at runtime, we can re-optimize the switch implementation uh, dynamically to achieve higher performance. And also, we can support tenant-specific network extensions. For instance, when a tenant's web apps come in, we install the uh, needed functions into the switch, and when, when the web apps are destroyed, we remove function to save resources or use the resources to serve other tenant's traffic. To achieve this goal, we design FlexCore in this work. FlexCore is an ecosystem that supports live program upgrades with strong consistency and no downtime. FlexCore has a whole stack design. It has a switch hardware design uh, to support live program upgrade. And it has a line of partial recommission primitives to change the P4 function at the runtime. And uh, all the changes are complete in transaction at the runtime with strong consistency guarantees. The input to the FlexCore ecosystem is the current P4 program and the new P4 program you want to change to. FlexCore will compute the differences across these two versions and apply the delta to the switch hardware atomically. Designing FlexCore has a number of challenges. The first challenge we have is to design a flexible switch architecture. Today's RMT architecture is inflexible for runtime changes. And this figure shows the classic IMT architecture where the memory and the compute are tightly coupled into status. And on this architecture, packets can only move forward to the next stage. And the memory of one stage cannot be used by the other stages. FlexCore uses a different architecture. It uses an enhanced version of a disaggregated RMT architecture or DRMT architecture. On this architecture, the compute and the memory are disaggregated, and the memory is organized as sharded, centralized memory banks that shares across all the mesh action processors. The memory exercise are uh, load balanced to minimize the uh, access conflicts. In terms of the compute, FlexCore has a number of mesh action processors that can handle the packets in parallel in a run to completion manner. So this architecture is more flexible. And in the rest of my talk, I will show you how to use this flexibility to build an ecosystem for runtime programmability. 
First thing we do is to achieve partial recalibration using a pointer-based in-direction mechanism. By partial here, I mean you change, uh, you only need to change what you need to, you want to change, like the differences of the versions of P4 program, without reflashing the whole switch pipeline. The key data structure here is a is a P program description table or PD tab, which is generated from a given P4 program. In the PD tab. Each entry records the information of a match action table in the P4 program. For example, the match action case, the key types, and the memory pointer points to the table entries. And each entry also have a special uh, pointer called a next table pointer, which points to the next table in the control flow of the P4 program. So for this P4 program, there is a def by default start uh, entry called start, this is the starting point of the processing, and uh, the start entry will point to the first table in this P4 program, which is IPv4. And the IPv4, IPv4 will point to its next table, which is route, and route points to the end of the program, which is not showing on this figure. The pointers here, including the memory pointers and the next table pointers, can be changed at the runtime atomically. And this is the basis for partial reconfiguration. Now let's see how to use this capability to insert a table at the runtime. Assume we want to insert an echo table between the IPv4 table and the raw table. The first step it, we do is to allocate the memory for this new table and insert its table entries. After that, we insert an entry in the PD tab table for the echo table and points to its memory. Then we set the next table pointer of the echo table to the raw table. Now we have finished all the preparation work, but so far no traffic has seen the echo table. That's because the IPv4 table still points to the raw table. To enable the echo table, we just need to do a switch pointer switching by setting the next table pointer of the IPv4 table to the echo table. So by doing this, all traffic will see the echo table simultaneously. FlexCore has a number of partial reconfiguration primitives to allow you to reconfigure the P4 function at the runtime, including match action tables, control flow branches, and the parsers. And each primitive here is guaranteed to be atomic by the hardware, which means a packet can only be processed by the program before the change is done or after the change is done. And FlexCore will transform the program differences into these primitives and, uh, and apply this primitive to the hardware automatically. The hardware guarantees the atomicity of a single reconfiguration primitive, which is great. But a program level upgrade usually involves multiple discrete changes. Here is a, an example. In this figure, the nodes here are the P4 match action tables or the control flow branches. And the edges here are the control flow in the program. And the, the colorful elements here are the changes we want to make. So as you can see, if we want to uh, achieve the uh, these changes, we need to involve multiple partial recombination primitives for multiple times. And if we don't do this in an atomic way, we might expose undesired intermediate states, which can lead to undefined behaviors. To solve this problem in FlexCore, we design a version control mechanism using FlexEdge. Flex Edge can be reviewed as an AFLS branch that checks on a global version number. If the version number is zero, the traffic will be processed by the current P4 program. But if we set the version number to one, then it will switch to the new version. And this Flex Edge can be installed into the program at the wrong time one by one atomically. So with that, we can enhance the uh, graph we saw on the last page like this. So by default, the version number of the flex edge uh, uh, is zero, which means all the traffic are processing using the current version of the P4 program. Then if we set the version number to one, simultaneously all traffic will be processed by the new version. So flex edge enable us to 
achieve all the changes in one transaction. One transaction is great because it has very strong consistency guarantee. But, however, but uh, one transaction is not always feasible. That's because it requires us to prepare all the differences together. And it has a high transient overhead. If the switch has no enough resources, it could fail. So here is a simple example. In this P4 program, we have two branches. The left branch, we want to delay table D. And on the right branch, we want to insert a new table E. If we do this in one transaction, we need to prepare table D before we can uh, remove table D. So the transient overhead could be larger than the current available headroom on the switch. And this could lead to a failure. However, if we reconfigure the left branch first by removing table D, this will release some resources for the later steps. So we can use these resources to insert table, table E. So in this case, the headroom is enough to hold the transient state. So we will have a successful upgrade. So this inspire us to have multi-step transactions. We want to have multi-step transaction, but we don't want to expose arbitrary intermediate step. So in FlexCore, we have a multi-level consistency for multi-step transactions. The first consistency is program consistency, which completes all the up updates in one transaction. It's the strongest one, and it also has the highest uh, overhead. The weakest one is execution, which completes the changes pass by pass. It guarantees that uh, uh, a packet can only be processed by the old pass or by the new pass, but never the mixture of them. And we have one in the middle called element consistency, but because of the time limitation, I won't go to the detail of their definitions and the algorithm, but our paper has more details. We implement FlexCore on both hardware and the software. For the hardware, we use NVIDIA Magnox Spectrum 2 silicon, which can run as fast as 12.8 terabits per second. And we also build a software simulator based on BMV2, uh, which supports all the reconfiguration primitives and uh, the three consistency levels. And our code is available here. Next, I will show you a case study of uh, accelerated multicast. But before that, let me give you a, a bit background of the setup. In this evaluation, we use a Spectrum 2 switch to connect one sender with several subscribers. And the sender wants to send the same data to a subscriber. At the beginning, the switch used a multicast, unicast program to send the data to the subscriber one by one. And these two figures show the traffic throughput with time and the job completion time. As we can see, if we have a lot of uh, subscribers, we will have a uh, uh, longer job completion time. So we want to uh, optimize the performance. What we do is to replace the unicast with the multicast program at the wrong time. After that, we, we, we can see we will have a better job completion time. And when the task completes, we want to remove the multicast program to save time, to save resources. <clears throat> but before that, we insert the telemetry program, and then we run multicast. The telemetry tells us that uh, there's no packet loss during this reconfiguration and removing multicast saves 20 nanoseconds on the pipeline latency. Finally, we remove the telemetry. So upgrade the switch function with uh, FlexCore has no downtime, and it can improve the performance uh, much uh, significantly. There are more results in our paper, including more use cases and the evaluation of uh, the multi-level consistency and the system overhead. So let me do a summary of the talk. Today's programmable switches are only programmable at uh, compile time. To, enab uh, to enable rapid development of a new function to the switch, we design FlexCore, which is an ecosystem for runtime programmability. FlexCore can do live switch program upgrades with zero packet loss and no downtime. And it supports reusing the current pipeline as much as possible uh, with, multiple with multiple different levels of consistency guarantees. We implement the FlexCore on both hardware and uh, software, and uh, we evaluate the FlexCore with several use cases. The use cases is showing that 
upgrading the switch function at runtime has no downtime, and you can optimize the network performance uh, greatly. In this talk, I talk about uh, the runtime programmability of a single switch, but uh, our ultimate vision is that the entire network uh, is runtime programmable end-to-end, -end, including the uh, host networking stack to the SmartNIC and all the switches in the network. Uh, if you want to learn more details, you can refer to our vision paper at Hallness. With that, I will conclude my talk, and uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you.